Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Shiba Marie. Today I'll be doing some Asian book recommendations. Before I get started, if you're new to the channel, please don't hesitate to subscribe down below as well as the notification bell. And if you're new, hi, hello, I'm Stephanie. I do a lot of bookish content. But I'm excited to talk about the eight books I want to recommend. So these are not in any particular order, but the first book I want to talk about is The Stand-In by Lily Chu. I actually really enjoy this book. This book basically follows a woman who is basically recognized one day at like a grocery store or something like that, like a gas station bodega situation. And people accidentally think of her as this really famous Chinese actress. And so next day she finds out that she's being contacted by them to be a stand-in for this actress Because she's dealing with some stuff and she's hoping that someone can kind of go in her place for events and things like that So basically she just wants someone to stand in for her for certain events That way she can get some rest and just really prioritize on working for her next role And so she ends up agreeing because there's a large sum of money involved and then as the book continues She ends up getting really close to a Chinese actor and obviously romance ensues. I actually really enjoy this book i think that this book had a great representation on like chinese culture as well as the fact that i love seeing like chinese languages in the book i thought that was really fun i also ended up recommending this book to my friend as well and she read it and she really enjoyed it as well so at the end of the day i think this is a great book if you're looking for a book on great chinese representation as well as romance the next book i want to recommend is the series tokyo ever after by emiko jean this book took me by surprise the series took me by surprise because i really didn't expect too much about it i felt like i read one of her books previously and i thought it was very very mediocre but this one I really enjoyed it's basically about a girl who finds out that she is actually a princess for the Japanese monarchy and her father never knew that she existed but now that her father knows that about her he ends up inviting her to go back with him to Japan learn more about their family about the culture and she ends up learning a lot about you know what it is to be a Japanese princess what it is for two identities because her mother is white and now she's kind of seen in between as like partially Asian Asian, but partially not and she's trying to learn about her cultural identity I feel like as someone who is obviously like I'm 100% Asian but as someone who lives in America I did have some sort of like cultural identity when I was younger which is learning to be about like American versus being Chinese or Taiwanese and trying to fit in and I feel like this book really resonated with me in that sense because she too was also trying to fit in and trying to find out where she really belonged and I really enjoyed that representation so if you're looking for a great book on that I highly recommend this book and the entire series. The next book I have on here is Dating Dr. Dill by Nisha Sharma. This book basically follows a woman who has a really great like chance encounter with this guy and things kind of went hot and heavy there but then something happens afterward where they're now considered enemies but because of their family's expectations and trying to find a husband they end up going on the fake dating kind of trope and then of course as the book kind of continues they realize that they're actually in love and romance ensues i really enjoy this book i thought this book was so fun so entertaining and i love the romances in here as well i felt like both characters were just really lovable and i also love how they're just both successful and they're both trying to just find love and as someone who is in her 30s i felt very relatable to the main character like the main girl just because i feel like you know i'm in my 30s i'm dating i mean i've been dating someone for the past year or so but at the same time it's like prior to that it's harder to date when you're in your 30s or when you're like more of a career woman and you're no longer in your early 20s like after college type of situation so i really related to her in that sense so i just had a great time reading this book the next book i want to recommend is the entire series which is six crimson cranes as well as dragon's promise i did like six crimson cranes a little bit more than dragon's promise i just felt like this book was a little bit more on the childish side on the writing versus Six Crimson Cranes, which I don't understand because I only read that like a year apart from each other. But overall, I really enjoyed the story. This book basically follows a girl called Shiori who is somehow cursed by her stepmother. And at the same time, her br six brothers are also cursed and they're turned into cranes. And her curse really is that she has a bowl on her head now. And if she tries to talk, then one of her brothers will die. So as the story progresses, she's trying to find a way to break this curse as well save her brother and then she ends up going this great adventure about dragons dragon pearls things like that and i really enjoyed this series i actually read her previous series it's the one about the magic tailor 
but i felt like that book was just okay like that series was okay this one was by far superior i really enjoyed all the characters i, ha I was so invested with everything invested with the story invested with the characters invested with what's going to happen and like at the end of the books i really want to know what was going to happen with one of her brothers just because of things that happened throughout the book that i'm just like now i'm curious to see how he is going to you know how his life is going to unfold and there's also going to be a spin-off book that follows shinari who is the stepmother and i believe that goes into her background like her origin story and i'm so curious about that too because i feel like she's a character that was bigger in the first book but at the same time because shinari was going on this adventure there wasn't actually a lot of interactions with the stepmother besides like passing tales and from like secondhand stories things like that so i'm really curious to go more into shinari's background and i cannot wait for that book to come out but in the meantime though definitely check out this series if you're looking for an amazing and fun fantasy read then this next book i want to recommend is kaikei by vashnavel patel i'm really hoping i pronounced that name correctly this book is basically a retelling or like an origin story of kaikei and i never heard about this person before this mythology so i really don't have much to say in terms of the original story but this is like a prequel slash origin story of how she became to be who she is later on in the stories and i really enjoy this book i've heard mixed reviews from indian readers where some of them really enjoy this story and other ones are like this is not that great of retelling but they can see why western readers like myself you know really enjoy it so it's kind of divided there but for everyone else like i read this for my book club earlier this year and everyone really really enjoyed it so honestly i cannot wait to see what more this author will write but if you're looking for an amazing retelling slash prequel type of book featuring indian mythology definitely check out this one then this next book i want to recommend is independence by shitra Banerjee diva karuni i'm really hoping i pronounced that name correctly this was another book club pick where a lot of people People enjoyed it essentially follows three indian sisters during the time of the revolution or like the civil war between the hindu indians as well as the muslim indians and the events that led up to the muslim indians going into pakistan and like forming their own country there i really enjoyed the story i actually didn't really know much about the history of indian culture so for me i came at it with zero background zero experience zero knowledge about the whole situation so it was really refreshing and very informational for me to kind of learn about this whole situation during that time period and not only that but fun fact miss marvel if you had watched that on disney also kind of briefly talks about that as well they call it a partition i don't know if that's something they call because they were muslim indians but that's not what they called it in the independence so i don't know if there's like a difference in lingos which i'm not surprised that there is but if you're looking for an amazing like rich tale about like indian culture indian history i definitely recommend this one i mean just reading about the three different sisters and their experiences with each other is just fascinating because one of them actually kind of converts into muslim um because she wanted to be with this guy who is muslim and then there's this whole like divide between her family like the hindus and then her and her husband honestly like this whole book was just super fascinating like really really enriching and very informative then this next book i want to recommend is Vanessa Jared's Got a Man by Laquette. This author is not Asian, nor is the main character Asian, but the reason why I put this book on here is because the main male character is Korean American. And I feel like he's such an integral part of the story that I felt like I can put him on here. Um, but I really enjoyed the story. It's about this woman who is divorced from a very toxic relationship. She spent several years kind of getting over it. And because of a really good lawyer, she's now really well off after the whole like divorce proceedings and the fact that this guy is just such a abusive dude. And apparently he's also really wealthy. So now she's just living her life, doing her own thing. And due to circumstances, she ends up going to the small town. So what happens is that this guy, his name is Michael, he ends up reaching out to her because his little sister is now engaged with her no good ex and he's wondering and he's hoping that she will kind of plead to the younger sister and show her his ways and tell her that you know this guy is actually a douchebag don't be with him and then she ends up agreeing because she doesn't want to see anyone else become a victim to her ex and that's how the two of them end up meeting and this whole drama kind of happens i really enjoyed this book it was really fun it's entertaining i love his perspective and kind of like why he's such a protective 
older brother. So if you're looking for a great like interracial romance featuring a hot Korean American dude, definitely check out this one. Then the last book I want to recommend is Meet Me in Mumbai by Sabina Khan. I actually really haven't heard too much people talking about it, but I read this recently and I really enjoyed it. So this book has two parts to it. The first part is about the mother and she is just trying to figure things out. She has a boyfriend that you know she loves and she ends up being pregnant. But then due to circumstances, the boyfriend kind of goes back to India to sort out some family issues and then she never hears from him again. But because she doesn't want to go through an abortion, she ends up giving birth and giving the child away for adoption. Now fast forward to 20 years later, we follow her daughter and she is living her life. She knows that she's adopted, but at the same time, she's really intrigued by her history because I believe she's adopted by these white parents, um, these white moms. So she doesn't really know anything about her Indian culture. And she lives in a very like white dominated society community as well and so as the story progresses she's becoming more and more cares about her own cultural identity her own cultural history what happened to her mom why did her mom give her up and then the two of them end up meeting in mumbai which is meet me in mumbai and like things kind of happen from there i really enjoy this book i thought this was such a heartfelt heartwarming novel with really fascinating characters i feel like i was so invested with both stories because you know, this one girl, she's pregnant, she's trying to figure out what to do. She knows it's a cultural thing with her parents and she's like, she doesn't want to let them down. And then on the other hand, we meet her teenage daughter who's trying to learn more about identity. She's like, I don't know anything about Indian culture. Like, I didn't even know what Desi means, stuff like that. And so she needed a lot of guidance with just learning more about her cultural roots. And I just found the whole thing just super fascinating. I was very invested. So if you're looking for an amazing cultural book about two teenagers who are just trying to navigate life i definitely recommend this one so anyways these are all the books i recommend for this time around i have some amazing reads on here i hope that there's something for each and every one of you but as always if you like this video please do give me a thumbs up it really does help on my channel and if you'd like to see more content of me please don't hesitate to subscribe down below as well as the notification bell and as always don't forget to follow me on twitter and instagram and i'll see you guys next time bye